All right, everybody, welcome to American Idol On Air, the singers you didn't see. I am very excited about this week's guest because we have yet indeed another American Idol contestant who has not been on the show, but we are very excited to welcome her to Idol On Air. Please welcome Chloe Solon. Hey, Bennett. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, it's so exciting. You know, um, I love American Idol, as you can probably tell by everything in my background. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see. Um, but... I always wish that we could see more of the amazing talent that comes through every season because, gosh, I mean, I don't know the percentages of how many of you guys that show up and make it to the judges, make it to Hollywood, aren't actually on air, but it's it's a lot. Um, so it's just great to talk to you and to get to hear these voices that, you know, America maybe didn't have the chance to see. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely been cool now that everything's, um, you know, been aired and everything to like go through and watch and be like, oh my gosh, like I just saw the back of my head. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like my audition didn't get aired. It's so cool. Like, oh my gosh, like there's my foot. Like, you know, like yeah. just the little blurbs of things. It's, um, no, it is cool. Like I get so curious because obviously you can tell that there's, especially once you get to Hollywood week, I mean, there's like anywhere between 150, 200 people in that theater and you see, I don't know, maybe 20 or something over the, course of the episodes but um you know american idol it's a tv show there's it's glitz and glamour lights and cameras but at the end of it at the end of the day the root of it all is music it would not exist without you guys the amazing talented musicians that have been coming through every year so i, I want to know about you as an artist first i want to know what got you into music how old you were and and the beginning of your journey yeah so um both my parents are musicians um, so I grew up in a very musical household and my grandmother played piano. Um, and so we had a piano in our house and I started messing around with that and like making up songs and stuff from the time I was like two. Um, and then I started taking piano lessons when I was five, right before I started um, kindergarten. And, um, and then when I was in uh, elementary school, I was always in choir and whatever. And I did Irish dance. Um, and then when I was in first grade, I was in my first musical and I went on to do musicals all throughout elementary, middle school, high school. And then, um, when I graduated high school, I decided to pursue musical theater in college. So I actually have my degree in musical theater with an independent study in music direction and piano accompaniment. So all of that being said, I, I really kind of started out as like a theater girl, um, even though like I, at my core, like I've always been like a rock singer, but like they don't have like rock star college. Right. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna go to theater college. And I did theater professionally for a long time. I lived in Manhattan and did all of that. Um, and it's still something I love and I'm passionate about. Um, but, you know, since the pandemic, I did move back home and I kind of was like, all right, well, you know, I did that. But now I want to focus on like what I really love, which is like singing rock music and pop music. Awesome. So rock music and pop music. And at some point, I imagine, as you said, pandemic 2020 and then I imagine sometime middle, late last year is when you started thinking about Idol. Were you approached? Did you audition yourself? So when I was living in Manhattan, I used to work at this restaurant called Gail's Broadway Rose. And um, all of the servers were also um, theater actors and uh, we're all trained in musical theater. So, you know, we'd like drop off a plate of fries and then like yeah. sing some lamas and whatever, Oh yeah, um, which was so much fun. Uh. And a coworker of mine had auditioned for the show and his producer had asked him if he knew anyone else that would be good for the show. And he's a sweet baby angel and mentioned me. So um, the producer reached out to me and I actually auditioned for season 19 and I made it all the way up to executive rounds. And then didn't get past that. And then I was approached for a couple other different projects that didn't work out. And then my second time around auditioning for Idol is when I, I got the go ahead. So now, now our listeners know after a couple episodes that there's usually three rounds of auditions. You've got the sort of cattle call, which is now virtual because of the pandemic. Then there's the EP round executive producers, and then you make it to the judges. 
since you had made it to the EP round previously, did you have to go back to square one or were you able to just cut through that first round and go to the EPs again? Yeah. So I was, I just went right to the EPs, which it was kind of nice the second time around because I had seen these people before and I kind of knew like what was going on. And I think the first time that I did audition, I was like very worried about like what, I was thinking that they wanted instead of just like being mean, like being like balls to the walls. Like I was very shy and like quiet, which is not me at all. Um, so the second time around, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have fun with this. And like, you, you know, I want to show who I am and not like what I'm trying to be for these people to like put me on TV. Um, and it went super well. And I was, I was so excited. I remember, um, when I was told that I was going on the show, my friends and family all knew that I had my final callback. And I told them, I was like, do not text me. Do not try to call me. I will contact you. Don't get interfered with the zoom or anything like that. Oh my God. And I knew that they were dying. And like, after they were like, all right, we're going to send you to the judges. You have to like immediately start going into interviews. Like it starts then. So I was on the phone for like, three hours, something like that. My poor family was bugging out. But after I, you know, finally told them, um, I actually, I work at a bar around uh, the corner from my house. And so we all went up and like celebrated. And like my best friend works with me at the bar and she was there. And like, it was so much fun just to like celebrate. But I felt so bad because everyone was in anticipation. And I was like, I can't tell you right now, I'm busy. Uh. So you mentioned that it was a little different this time around because you were a lot less worried and you were just more comfortable being yourself. What kind of changes? Was that your song choice? Was it your style, your presentation? What did that look like? Um, I think that I just like was more comfortable showcasing myself in that way because like I said, I did theater mainly for a really, really long time. And then when I moved back to Binghamton, that right when I moved back, I auditioned for the first time for Idol like a month later. Um, so I still was like, kind of like out of touch, like out of place. I hadn't like sang in a while, like out anywhere, just cause everything was closed. Um, so then after, you know, I didn't, I didn't get through that first time. Um, I started playing out. I would play every single week out like solo stuff. I started playing with other musicians and I just got like my groove back, you know, Um, So I think that that definitely aided me my second time around because I was just so much more comfortable and I was like, I know what I'm doing and like, I have this idea of like what I want to bring to the table and I have a game plan of how I'm going to get there. So being around all that music kind of made you even more, you you felt like you were able to present yourself more comfortably and, and, and as yourself as you were going around for the second time. Yeah. And it's not that like I was ever like uncomfortable with that. I think I just was like out of practice for a while. And this is like, it was like the first big thing that I had, you know, tried to do since the world shut down. Oh yeah. No, it's been, I would say that the show has been really interesting since the world shut down because obviously, I mean, I feel for those season 18 contestants who had to do the show from home. I really do. Um, But going into season 19, I mean, like I've read interviews with the producers and they talk about how they think that the Idol Across America format where they're doing it virtually has actually been maybe stronger than the bus version because when they had the bus, they could, you know, if you live near it, great. If not, you know, you, you're out of luck. But, you know, they, I think that that's something about being able to just be in your house and get on, get on Zoom. I mean, I, I don't know. How, how was that for you? I mean, did, did you do you like the virtual version or do you prefer kind of the more traditional before the world shut down? I mean, I thought (laughs) it was kind of nerve wracking for me because I'm just like in my house and I'm like pacing and I'm like, Oh my God, I need to take a shot of Jameson before I do this or else I'm going to freak out. Um, (laughs) But um, it was kind of nice just because I was home and like I had time. I like, you know, like put on like the music that I wanted to listen to and like got ready and whatever. But also on the other hand, like I literally went to school to learn how to audition in a cattle call. So it wouldn't have been like anything out of the the ordinary for me. Right. To have done that instead of on Zoom. So 
didn't seem to make too much of a difference. Yeah. Now, um, is there feedback in the EP round or is it more like you're in, you're not in? Um, yeah, there is uh, feedback. Um, a lot of what I heard was um, just like really show everything, like leave it all in the audition room because you only get, you know, a, a minute and 30 seconds. You got to get out all your tricks you know, and lay it all on the line. Um, and so that's kind of like what the producers advised me to do, which, which worked out, which yeah. is great. Um, but, you know, and then to, to counteract that, and I knew that this was going to happen, the uh, feedback that I got from the judges, mainly from Lionel, um, was that he knew that that was my strategy to put everything mm. out there. And he was like, I understand why you did that. That was smart that you did that. And he's like, when you come back, bring, we want to see the like dialed down version where you, we already know what you got. So just like hone in on your skill set and your storytelling, which I knew that I like, I was expecting that kind of um, feedback from them. Do you think being a rock artist and maybe, I mean, we'll get to your song choices, but I imagine maybe bigger belt to your songs. And maybe some of that is like, you're in a genre that, kind of automatically your 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 mind is saying like do more do a lot and then maybe it's hard to kind of tone dial it down at times yeah I mean it's something that I've worked on I've always had like a huge voice since I was a kid and I didn't always like know what to do with it um but I think that that is something that makes me stand out and makes me unique is like the way that I have these like crazy belt you know moments that I do um, but you know, you, I've been told this for years and this is something that I say to like other people, like you got to riff with a purpose. If you're going to that place, you got to go to that place with a purpose. You can't just be all willy nilly and do it for no reason. Cause that's, right. yeah, that gets boring. That get, gets annoying. Um, so yeah, when I did come back for Hollywood, I definitely listened to what they said. And I think that I executed it really well. Um, even though they sent me home, oh. um, I still wouldn't change anything of, of what I did. So Yeah. Um, I, I want to kind of go through the rounds that you made it through. And, and, and first song choices, what, what did you sing in the EP round? Um, in the EP round, I sang um, Peace of My Heart by Big Brother and the Holding Company. And I sang um, I Put a Spell on You, the CCR version. And there was one more. I, I want to say it might have been You and I by Lady Gaga. Ooh. I can't remember. This is like a long time ago at this yeah. point. It's almost a year ago. Wow. Um, I, I'm also one more question about the EP round. So, you know, judges round, you're, you're in front of artists, musicians. Uh, in the EP round, I'm assuming it's mostly just the TV producers, not like producers that are necessarily as tuned into the music industry and they're more about just finding, you know, their stars of the show. So is the feedback more specifically about how they want to see you, you know, act on TV or what they want you to bring to the audition for an entertainment purpose? Or do they actually credit critique you on your notes or your lyrics or anything like that? Um, it's definitely more based on, like the entertainment value right. of like, how can you be marketable? Like what's going to make you stand out? Um, you know, and like some of that did have to go along with like my voice and like my vocal choices and stuff, but mostly it's like, all right, what's gonna pull people in? What's going to make the best TV, you know? Yeah. Um, what city did you, did you audition in when you got to the judges? I went to Nashville. Oh, you did November, right? Is that when they were filming? That? Yes, um, early November, and it was freaking awesome. Oh, I had bet. never been to Nashville before, and I got to go with my best friend, and we had a freaking blast. That's awesome. It was so fun. I was uh, I went to Belmont for a brief period of time, so I, I spent okay. a year there, and, and I, I love Nashville. I've been a couple of times. That's that's great. I mean, I know it was fun for the show to get back on the road because they just had to shoot in california last season but that must have been a blast to me and i don't know if you had the downtime or if it was just all about filming but you know just being in that city i imagine was was a blast yeah so um i was lucky 
Um, and they kind of split stuff up. And uh, a lot of days I was filming like all day. Um, mm -hmm. But I did get a couple nights off. And so we went out and kind of explored. And it was so cool. Yeah. And we just went out and listened to music and danced. And it was a great time. And we really want to go back and have like a nice little uh, long weekend. Eventually. Well, that'll be great. The food there is just everything. Oh, my God. I love whether well, it's barbecue or Nashville hot chicken. You know, you got to experience oh, all of it. Yes. So I, I definitely recommend Nashville to anyone who's looking for her. A good getaway, good time. Oh yeah. Um, so you mentioned, I, I guess, multiple days of filming. There's a lot that goes into it before you see the judges. I mean, they're probably getting B-roll and doing interviews and kind of the itinerary. I asked this to everybody. What What was your from the moment you got there to the moment you left? What was the day like? Yeah. So um, the first day that I was on set, um, I did absolutely nothing. Mm. <laughs> like. <laughs> They were just like grabbing random people, like taking the interviews and whatever. Thank God it was a beautiful day. And where the audition was held um, had like a really nice outdoor patio. So I just like sat outside and like read a book and hung out because um, I, I wasn't really needed too much. Um, and then at the very end of the day, this was like nine or 10 at night, I went in and did uh, social media shoots where I just like, they took pictures of me and like made boomerangs. <laughs> so that's like all I did the first day. Um, and then my actual audition date, um, I think we started at like 6 a.m. And I started off on B-roll at 6 a.m. Um, and then the rest of the day, um, I had a series of interviews. At one point, I had to go to a different studio where they take you into the 180 room. Yes. And... Um, so when I, I used to work in the state of Maine, um, at a lake resort, um, and I did entertainment there and there was this woman there that, um, I became close with and her name is Lois and, um, her and I became pen pals. And so we write letters back and forth. Um, but she, since I met her, she always asked me to audition for American Idol. And at the end of all of her letters, um, it would always say like, PS, please try out for American Idol. So she kind of like pushed me to do it. And, um, so when I went into the 180 room, they had gotten a video of her, Oh yeah, um, good. like encouraging me. So they played that, which was really sweet. Um, so then they bust us back over or like in our like little like fancy car or whatever. Um, and then, uh, they did some other B-roll stuff with me. And then some, like another contestant was like, oh, like what number in line are you? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like they already started? Like I didn't even know. And they're like, yeah, they already started. So I go ask like one of the PAs. I was like, hey, like when am I going? And they're like, oh, like you're actually fifth. They're on number three right now. Oh, wow. And I was like, what, what the heck? I had no time to warm up. Um, so I went into the bathroom and I have like a really loud voice and I was warming up. And someone like knocked on the door and they're like, like, yo, you need to like, yeah, <laughs> like you can't be singing like that in here. So once that happened, um, they ended up turning that into a B roll mm. where they brought me outside and had me warming up and had everyone like react to it, which oh was gosh. funny. <laughs> so that being said, my, um, my place in line got switched. Um, but it was good that everything was so fast paced. Like I was back and forth, back and forth doing a bunch of different stuff. Cause I didn't really have time to like get nervous. Like I went downstairs and they're like, all right, like you're next. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's do this. Yeah. So it wasn't like festering in my brain. Cause I didn't actually like know when I was going to go in there. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask, and I think I already found the answer and everything you've just been saying, but if it's a, chance to socialize i mean are you like meeting other people or it sounds like you, you're kind of in your own element you're kind of in the zone warming or warming up or you said reading a book i mean are people meeting each other contestants or is it more just like getting themselves ready yeah um people are definitely very social um actually one of the contestants that i probably like became like 
like the closest to um I met her on that first day when I was outside like reading a book because I was just sitting by myself and her and her mom came over and we just like hit it off and like her and I still talk like all the time um but I think for me like I was saying I have so much experience with like these like crazy auditions that like I sometimes just like to like save my energy yes and I feel like sometimes I come off like being like shy or whatever and I'm like no I'm just like saving my time and my voice and my energy and like I promise I'm not like being mean I just need to like do that for right. myself um because there was like a lot of people like especially in Hollywood they're like scream singing at like eight in the morning having a jamboree and I'm like aren't you tired yeah. I'm, like I'm just like sitting in the back of the room knitting and you guys are like singing in like eight part harmony like oh that's it sounds great but you're making me tired wow um just to clarify so they are you fifth overall for the day or are they putting you in groups and of that group you're number five um i was supposed to be fifth overall of the day oh wow okay that's early but then that that got switched Mm -hmm. thank god because i was like very (laughs) thrown off by that yeah that's right so the yeah the the bathroom singing led to the b-roll and then the b-roll met you were a little later in line but at the end of the day it worked out because you got to hollywood so yeah getting in front of luke lionel and katie i mean needless to say i mean i'm sure walking in there it's like all the jitters but yet this excitement i mean what are you feeling yeah i literally tripped as soon as i came into the Uh, room (laughs) yeah it's just like classic um but you know my my thought the whole time was like all right like we all do the same things like we're all musicians, they're people. So you're just singing for other people who sing. Yeah. Just to try to like keep myself from getting so hyped up and like we all are doing the same thing. They're doing it at a different level than I am right now, but they started where I was at one point. So like just relax. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I literally tripped as soon as I got into the room. Did the did the judges react strongly or was it just like a whatever? Um, no, I just like laughed at myself. Yeah. I was like, hi. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious about how you guys feel because back in the day, if you were on Idol, you'd be auditioning for, I mean, with the exception of Paula, you're auditioning for A&R people, Randy and Simon. Now you're in front of artists. And I, just, I thought of that because you mentioned they do the same thing as me. Was your comfort level higher than it would have been if you were on the show 15 years ago when you weren't necessarily auditioning for fellow artists? Oh, I don't know. That's like, that's like a really good question. Um, I guess like everyone's always scared of Simon or whatever. Right. Um, I think Randy Jackson is hilarious, mm-hmm. um, especially in like an idol sense where he like is trying not to laugh at someone. And he just oh my like, God, that's cl- I, I literally like I literally do that in school when I'm trying not to laugh at something. I'm just like, uh. It that makes me laugh so hard. Oh my god! And like friends of mine, we always say like that. It's a no from me, dog. Like that is yeah. just like part of normal conversation. Yes. So I would have loved to meet Randy. Oh. Um. No, but I think I think it's cool having artists on the panel because they are really able to give advice from their own careers and their own lives, and you know. They're doing, like I said, they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, how much chatter is going on before the singing starts? Um, there's like a, there's like some banter and mm-hmm. whatever, which is nice because like they actually like take the time to like chat with you a little bit. Yeah. And they're not just like, all right, sing. So um, there's like a little time where you can kind of just like breathe and, you know, they talk to you a little bit and then. You sang, and it was funny because after I sang, um, Katie tried to um, hit the note that I hit at the end of my audition song, and she tried it like a couple times, and it was like not coming out. Oh, it was maybe really that's funny. why they didn't Actually, air it. <laughs> yeah, that part of it was aired though. Oh, the little clip of her. 
oh, trying okay. to hit it. So it was just funny. And like, that's something that I'll remember because it's just hilarious. Yeah. And of course, like Lionel and Luke are making fun of her. But it's just cool. They have such a good like bond. Yeah. I I, I got to say that I, I, I will. I mean, I'm always an Idol fan. I've seen every episode, but I, I, I'm impressed that. Tell me what you think. The show is actually genuinely about the contestants. It's not about the judges. There's antics. There's clips of them, you know, having fun from time to time. But I mean, did you feel as a contestant like the show was really about the singers? Because that's how I feel when I watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of it is story based. Yes. Um, Which is great. But also like it takes away from people being like more people being aired oh, singing totally because totally. it definitely focuses on like specific people's story and their journey like i said which is great which is really cool to see but like on the other hand like yeah if it was less of that you'd have more auditions and more singers being aired you know right no i think i will say that what kind of frustrated me i think this season during the audition tour was the amount of stories in the sense that we're meeting people who didn't actually even make it that far or weren't aired after that. So it's like, why are you introducing us to somebody with an eight minute package that we're not ever going to see again? Further proves the point that it's about the story. But, you know, I, I'm thinking about the math here. It's like, if you have an, if you have an eight minute story, you could replace that with like two or three decent sized audition clips or just throw some montages in there. Like, right. that's, that's what I would prefer. I get why they're doing it, but I also think that I think that it, people at home can sense that they're not maybe getting as many singers. Although, do you ever watch Clark Beckham's videos? You know Clark from season fourteen. The he like was runner up on the show, and he does like idol review videos. No, I've never seen those. Oh, okay. Well, he he like every week he does like live Q and A, and like he he reviews every episode, and he actually thinks that they've shown more singers this season than last season. So, I mean, I haven't thought about it, but. You know, perhaps they've at least tried to include a little more. I also heard that the number of people who signed up for the show this season doubled from last year. So, I mean, yeah, I think they said there was like a hundred thousand. Yeah, something like that. That's like close to what they had back in the day when you know. I mean, now you don't have the shots of the crowds because you can't put that many people in a room. But like you know, Idol Across America really opened the doors up to a lot more people. Yeah, and I think that's the cool part about everything, like kind of being on zoom as it gives a lot more people an opportunity right you know like people work and like people have families and stuff and like to go and drive to a city and wait in line for like 10 hours not everyone can pull that off no um so it's cool that it's it's more accessible now to great singers you know who may have not had the opportunity otherwise totally what did you sing for the three judges? I sang I Put a Spell on You. Ah, good choice. Yes. And um, it was super fun. And, um, you know, like, I I try to, like, think back of, like, how I felt when I was performing it. And, like, I definitely, like, blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell am I doing? Like, I'm singing for Lionel Richie right now. And, right. Like, everything just shut off when I was, like... That was great. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> what did Lionel say about your performance? Um, he he did like it. Um, like I said before, like I had a strategy and he picked up on that. Um, and they were like afraid that it was going to be gimmicky. Um, but then like I, Lionel was kind of talking with me about it. And he was like, I see why you did that. And he was like, yeah, I can also see, like, you have a theater background, like, you're a storyteller, so, like, mm -hmm. bring that for Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, Katie and Luke, similar critiques or anything different? Um, so I got a yes from Katie and Lionel, and Luke actually gave me a no. Um, and he said the only reason he gave me a no was uh, because he wanted me to work really hard before I got to Hollywood. Mm. he's been i think significantly tougher this season i think he's at least from what they've shown on the show he's probably given out the most no's um 
So, but you know, I mean, so so two yeses, yeah. So obviously Lionel and Katie. Um, and 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 when you do, you think that that one no really does push you and motivate you to like, I guess, you know, put, take it up a notch when you go to Hollywood. I mean, I'm used to like getting no's, you know, like in the audition room, like for theater stuff, you get no's all the time. Oh yeah. Um, but I also like respect that he did give me a no. Um, cause it could have been easy to just be like, all right, well, they said yes. I'm going to say yes too. Yeah. But I like appreciate that he, you know, stuck to what he thought and said no. And, you know, kind of made it clear, like, you know what, you gotta like, you can't just sail by, you gotta put the work in, which I think I did. So totally. So at the end of the day, you get the golden ticket. So that's awesome. So then like probably less than a month later, you're out the Orpheum in LA filming Hollywood week. I mean, what are, what's your going into that? Are you, I mean, just the cliche, there's excitement, there's nerves, but you know, what's going through your mind as you're about to embark on this experience? Um, I was mostly like excited to see like my friends that I had met in Nashville. Yeah. Um, and I also had never been to the uh, West coast before. Mm hmm. Um, so that was really awesome. Um, I packed so many clothes because I didn't know what, like what I was going to wear. Right. Um, I had to like pay like extra money because my suitcase was like oh. too heavy. Oh my God. Um, so it was very like nerve wracking and like my plane had got delayed a little bit and whatever. So I was like, Oh my God, like I hope I get there on time. But it was really nice. The hotel we stayed in was beautiful. And um, it was cool to see everyone and meet new people. And um, yeah, unfortunately, it was like really cold and rainy the entire time we were there. And I was like kind of bummed out. I was like hoping it was going to be at least a little bit sunny. But it was still cool just to be in L.A. for that little bit of time. I'm I'm just curious. I mean, I don't know what the odds are this, that this would happen. But I mean, there are you know, over 150, 150 people going, did you run into anybody at the airport? Does everybody arrive and like you see other people or is it not till you actually get to either the hotel or the theater that you finally see people? It wasn't until I got to the theater that I saw people. Okay. Um, but when I went in Nashville, got there in Nashville, um, everyone kind of like got there together and then we like all took a bus over together. Uh-huh. Which was cool because that was like your first time meeting everyone and yeah. like everyone's like all excited and yeah. whatever. Um, yeah. So so then when I was like arrived in L.A., I actually had to like take an hour long Uber from LAX. Um, and like so it took me way longer to get to the hotel than expected. And then, you know, checking in, I was like, I don't know where I'm going and whatever. But we figured it out. Now, uh, is there also like a is it? bus from the hotel to the theater as well for that round yeah so they they throw you on buses i think they had like three or more like big ass like coach style right. buses and um they bus you over and then um the orpheum is beautiful yeah and it's it's huge um but it's cool because you know you get to watch everyone else's performances when you're not doing other stuff like interviews right. and b-roll and stuff you get to like be an audience member which is which is awesome so do they have you all gather in the audience and then pull people out in chunks to like say okay we got to get interviews from you b-roll from you how does that system work yeah so like everyone's sitting in the audience and then like in between people or in between takes they'll be like all right chloe come with me all right, right. you know john doe come with me right so they'll they'll pick people out or um you know, tell you at this specific time, like these people are going to lunch and then the rest of you are staying here and then we'll switch and then whatever. Right. Is now, I know that this season they had that twist of having the alumni mentors. So I imagine there's an extra day of filming before you get to the genre challenge to get that stuff shot. Yeah. So some of the people in my genre went that same day that we worked with David and then I was one of the people who went the day after working with David. Okay. Oh, so they got everything done. Like they, they were simultaneously shooting genre challenge and mentoring sessions. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. 
uh, and as you said, rock was your genre. Um, I was wondering because you know it's it's kind of the same thing they've done from season one, which is just people in a line, step forward, you step back. But the I guess the added twist the past few seasons is you you're in a specific genre. Are you? I mean, I guess in in this case, it's obvious that you're rock. But are you saying to them, "I'm going to sign myself up for rock," or are they automatically assigning you to a genre? No, you get to pick. Uh huh. So, so you know, they give you the options, and then you pick whatever you feel um, best suits you as an artist. Got it. So you're working with David Cook. That must be cool. Did you watch a season? Were you a fan? I did. I actually remember watching that season. So it was so weird, like. They brought all of us, all of us rockers up yeah. to the roof, like where the pool was. Right. And they're just like filming us and they're like, hang out and like play guitar and like, yeah, whatever. It looks like, like you love each other. Time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this like random man comes out of the shadows essentially. And I'm like, we like, wait, who is that? And then I'm like, I kind of recognize him. And then we all kind of turned and we were like, Oh my God, it's David Cook. Yeah, man bun and <laughs> we all. We didn't know that he was there. We didn't know that he was coming. Um, And he is so awesome. He's so laid back. He's just a really, really genuine guy. And it, I, I actually didn't think that I was going to be mentored by him because he didn't have time to mentor everybody. Um, And so he, I think there was about four people that he mentored and then I thought that that was going to be it and then they're like oh hey Chloe come on over and I was like oh my god I get to sing for him yay okay cool um and he was so nice and like uh we actually had to film my mentoring session like a couple times um because he kept saying explicit words um, so he had to like film it a couple times, but he was just so encouraging and so sweet. And, um, I'm just like really lucky that I got to like, meet him and, um, you know, we got to like, kind of like hang out for a little bit. And, you know, after he mentored everyone, he like came and sat down with us and like, um, we just kind of like all talked about music and like talked about his experience on the show. So it was, it was pretty rad. I think that singing for him gave me a lot of confidence. Um, just the things that he said were so kind and so genuine. Um, and like, I'm like, okay, if like David Cook like is, is thinking this about me and is like, you know, saying these things about my singing and my performance, like I, I can do this, you know? So I think that that was like really important for me to have um that before I went out, out on stage right right and and you said that was it wasn't the same day though right you had to go the, the next day to yeah to... and then the next day when I actually was supposed to go I was like once again like you don't really know when you're going like they just right. are like all right go right um so it's like the hurry up and wait kind of oh, game yeah. um but I was like already I was the first one in my line all ready to go. I like get my pinky toe out on stage and they're like, Oh, we're going on lunch break. Come back uh, in an hour. I'm like, oh, man. great. Like, <laughs> let me like try to eat some lunch right. and get super nervous. Yeah. And then come back. Okay, cool. So then we get back and I'm like, all right, I'm ready. Once again, I like get like my pinky toe out on stage and Luke comes out and sits down with the piano and starts singing. Then Lionel comes out and starts singing. Then Katie comes out and starts singing. And meanwhile, like I'm backstage. So it was kind of like crappy because I couldn't really like interact. Like yeah. I was just like, actually, you can see it in the genre challenge episodes when they're having that whole jam session. You can see me in oh, the wings, like yeah. peeking out behind the curtain. Oh my god. Because I was on deck. So yeah, so then Katie rips her pants. Yeah. And, you know, I'm like, oh, shit, like, I have to, like, follow that. But yeah. then, like, I like, reframed it. And I was like, oh, my God, like, Luke, Brian, Katy Perry, and Lionel Richie just warmed up for me. Right. So I must be doing something right. Yeah, they're they're the opening <laughs> act, and you're the main event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just really randomly, uh, I'm always, I have all these thoughts, and I'm like, ADD. But um, do, do you know David Cook's song, Permanent? Not off the top of my head. He 
um he sang it the year after he won on like the next finale it was about his brother who unfortunately passed away of cancer but at the time it was a song about him and so after seeing it on idol i went and listened back to it again i have like back in the days and before spotify where you're downloading songs off of itunes like i had like they had the actual live performance you could download and all the money went to charity <laughs> and it just like it rips your heart open it's like it's beautifully tragic but also just you know the you can hear the pain in his voice it's like i mean just his vocals alone are beautiful and and his artistry is really something i'm definitely gonna have to go back and listen to it when we got to hollywood that same day that david mentored us we were at the orpheum and like ruben was like right in front of me oh yeah um and then i heard that Haley reinhardt was there yeah and i was like she is like my favorite idol alumni. I uh-huh. adore her. Um, and she's so talented. And I was like so bummed out. I was like, oh my God, I wish I saw Haley. But like it was probably a good thing because I would have embarrassed myself. <laughs> so like it's fine. Like we were in the same building at the same time. I can deal with that. I didn't like make a fool out of myself meeting her. So <laughs> we saved we saved that. Uh well, okay, so back to back to filming the genre challenge. So it's it's hurry up and wait. It's you think you're going, and then the judges do their thing. So finally, soon after that, you get to go on stage. Yeah, so like right after, like Katie taped her pants back together. Right. Yeah. You're like, all right, Chloe, go on out there. I'm like, great. Okay. Yeah. And you're it, it, the vibe is good. Are you are you ecstatic? Or are you terrified? I was really nervous. Um. Just because, like, it was also, like, after everyone's lunch break and, right. like, it's, like, halfway through the day and, like, you know, Katie's probably pissed because she just ripped her pants. <laughs> um, so, anyways, I just try to, like, shove that all aside. And yeah. I go out and um, I sang The Joke by Brandy Carlisle. And she's one of my favorite artists. And that is a song that, like, means a lot to me. And I played piano. Um, so I, like... I'm glad I did that. I got to like showcase like my piano chops. Um, And I think that I really nailed like Lionel's critiques from Nashville. Um, And like, I got like a standing O from like my fellow competitors and whatever. And I felt really good about it. Um, And then, you know, after the rest of my line went, um, we came back out and I ended up getting eliminated um, which was like not super fun, no. but you kind of have to like pretend like it's fine because there's like a camera like right here in your face, right. and you're like, <laughs> you're like, oh my no. god, this sucks so bad, but uh, I'm still gonna smile. Oh my god. Um, yeah, and so then they do like a post interview with you, and then they like throw you on what I call the reject bus. Um, so everyone else that like gets eliminated in that you know specific time, they all get on the reject bus, and then. Um, you fly back home like the next morning. So like if you're eliminated, they're like, bye. Yeah. See ya. Oh. We're not paying for you to stay in this five star hotel. Yeah. Uh, we have to. <laughs> and then on top of that, Brandy Carlisle likes your TikTok. Hello. I was freaking out. I was so excited. And I just like saw that randomly and I was like, I texted my best friend and I was like, oh my God, Brandy likes my TikTok. Yeah, I, I'm so, I feel like I felt so silly, like freaking out about it. But like, that's like pretty freaking cool. No, that's not silly. That's that's incredible is what it is. Wow. Yeah, I look up to Brandy a lot. And I think she's a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. And she's also like best friends with Joni Mitchell. Mm-hmm. And I also love Joni Mitchell. And I wish that I was best friends with her. So it was really, really cool that that happened. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. I was so happy for you when I read that. I was like, it's, I mean, every artist dreams of that, right? It's like, I mean, it's, it's amazing that the internet can, you know, connect us with these people who we idolize. And next thing you know, it's like they noticed us and it, it really is. I mean, between being on American Idol and having an idol of yours notice you, I mean, gosh, you're having a pretty good year. Yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy year. I've done like a lot of crazy things that I never thought that I was going to do. Um, and you know, I've had some setbacks. I've had some like really crappy things happen, but like I've had some really, really amazing things happen. And some of like the best plates that I'll probably have in my life yeah. Um, over the past year. 
And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so fortunate and I'm like really excited to see like what else is going to happen and like what other doors is going to open for me. And, you know, maybe I'll be back next season. We'll see. Stay tuned. American Idol aired Chloe Salon. Yeah. Um, We'll see. But who knows? I mean, you know, I think that that's, that's just what's amazing is that you never know what's, what's around the corner. Um, And, you know, this show I know was certainly a wonderful experience for you. And I think that there's, there's probably, I mean, so much of what people probably don't realize is, I mean, not only how many contestants are actually there, but I'm, I'm sure the bond that you form with these people, whether they also didn't air or they did air. I mean, I'm sure you made really close friends during your time on the show. Yeah. And I think the coolest part about it is that there was nobody that made it feel like competitive. Everyone was able to learn something yeah. um, from, you know, all of their fellow musicians. And I think that that was the coolest part about it. Um, and just like talking about music and like talking about like where people have played and like, you know, what their album coming out is like doing, you know, it's just like so cool. And, you know, social media is nice to have. Um, cause you know, I can see like when people are releasing stuff or like, right. you know, they post their last show, yeah, um, like videos from their last show. And so it's cool to like keep connected and like, you know, still keep cheerleading for these people that I met that, you know, turned into my friends. Uh, yeah, no. And I mean, I, 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 I imagine it's, it's kind of like going to camp, right? Like a big old music camp. And yeah, you make, you make, it's often said that people make some of their best friends at camp. And, you know, I, I imagine that that's what it felt like. I mean, with the exception of like half of you having to go home in one day and then slowly but surely everybody but 24 have to, you know, go home. But, uh, I meant to ask too, uh, any other people who we would know that were in your line for rock and the genre challenge? Um, so I had Ryan Argast in my line. Um, I had Rose O'Neill and I had Christian Beck in my line. Um, and I don't think any of their auditions were aired either. Um, but Ryan was the only one that made it in our line and he went on to the showcase round. So he made it pretty far. Uh Um, but yeah, it's, it's just cool to like, see everyone's like doing really well. And Leah Marlene, her and I actually got pretty tight when we were in Nashville because we were filming a lot of the same stuff at the same time. Like we went over to the 180 room mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Um, and so like we got to spend a lot of time together and like chatted and like her mom was there and like, you know, like before I went to Hollywood, her mom like sent me a message and was like, I can't wait to, um for you and Leah to be back together again. Like, best of luck, like drink lots of water, you know, just yeah. like just very sweet and encouraging. And so it makes me so I'm just like so proud of her and so in awe of her um and just everyone it's so cool to see their journey like everyone's like making the damn moves and you know yeah. being little rock stars uh i have a story for you about leah so freshman year at belmont university which we both no longer attend she went there and you know i don't know if you watch but they did the whole package i mean i i was there i you know i was there while she went and then left um first semester i i was a film major i music is kind of a hobby for me i sang in my high school band i've written a couple of songs at most um but i signed up for intro to songwriting as an elective thinking this is kind of like a chance for anybody who you know likes to do it for fun can kind of jam out or whatever i should have known that i'm in nashville tennessee and that every other student is going to be a songwriting major so i the first day i go in there and i'm like shit like i i didn't know if it was a mistake i didn't know if it was only meant to be for majors and i'm i'm you know i'm a if anything i'm a music business minor that's my only connection to music at that school but day one we all go around and play something and i was like that girl is a star she has steel in her eyes she's got the look she's got the sound she's got the energy and the attitude i carpooled with her like i was in her car with like three other people i have her phone number and so when i heard that she was going to be on the show 
I was so thrilled for her. And to see her, I mean, they put her, they put her on early release for the audition. They put her first like three rounds in a row. She is killing it. And not just because I went to school with her, but she is my American Idol. I want her to win season 20. I do too. I I literally messaged her the other day and I was like, everyone in Binghamton is rooting for you and voting for you. Um, Because I love you so much and I brag about you to everyone. (laughs) And also like, I don't need to brag. Like you're just amazing. Um, uh, Yeah. And oh my gosh, her performance on Disney night. Ugh. And I had my mom watch it with me yesterday and like I had goosebumps the entire time. I was like, do you see this right now? And she's mm. like, I have them too. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a great season, a lot of talent, but in my mind, just my opinion, the most consistent vocally song choices, presentation, not falling under the cracks everybody has like a bad performance or two but you know she has been in my mind the most consistent and i just think that her winning would be like the kelly clarkson moment that the 20th anniversary needs because that girl is so deserving and so humble and so original and she's like so kind and i think the most energetic person i've ever met and that's coming from me right <laughs> like <laughs> We're just saying a lot. Yeah. Well, get two people with a lot of energy together. It's going to be immaculate vibes. I mean, you know? Yeah. Crazy. Like crazy ADHD all over the place. Yes. Vibes, but... Yes. <laughs> but we love that. Um, It's actually crazy. So when uh, – so Christian's from Long Island. Yeah. And I went to SUNY Cortland, which is a very – Long Island school. Okay. Most of the um, student population are from the island. So when we were in Hollywood, I like overheard Christian um, talking to someone. He was like, oh yeah, I'm from New York. And I was like, where in New York are you from? I'm from New York too. And um, so he was like, oh, I'm from Long Island. I said, where are you from? He said, Patchogue. I go, oh my gosh, like one of my best friends is from Patchogue. He was like, on the off chance, like, what's her name? And so I tell him, and he was like, get out. I was like, what, you know her? He was like, I grew up with her. She used to babysit me. No way. And her and Christian and her little sister were like best friends growing up. And my best friend used to babysit him. That is such a small world. Yeah. So we like took a photo and sent it to the girls. And they were so excited and like, they were like crying and they were right. like, oh my God, this is so awesome. He's just incredible. His voice is beautiful. Overall, I mean, this season, there's a lot of buzz. It's a good group. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are watching it. Yeah. This season. Um, Like a, a lot of people that I've come into con- uh, contact with, like not even just because like I was on the show. But other people are like, oh, yeah, I'm watching American Idol. I haven't watched it in years. Yeah. So I think that it's getting really good viewing. Yeah. You know, um, which is cool. I mean, what did they say? There was like 19 million votes or something. I was just thinking this is the first time in like, I don't know how many seasons that Ryan actually like bragged about the voting numbers. I was like, they haven't done that since like probably like Scotty McCurry or Philip Phillips won. You know, yeah, it's insane. I think, and I, I said this in the last interview I did, I really think that, just in my opinion, because I've seen every episode of the show, it went downhill. Mariah Carey, Nicki Minaj, that whole thing. And did you did you watch that year? Did you were you watching when it was on Fox the show? Yeah, I think that the last, the last like full season that I really watched was Haley Reinhardt's season, okay. which I can't remember what number that was, but I think that was the year that Scotty won. Right. Yeah. Season 10. Um, and well, yeah, like the numbers went down every year since that. And that happens cause it's, you know, that's how shows work. But I feel like, especially when they were like ending on Fox, like it just was going downhill. I thought the talent was just, eh, but ever since they've been on ABC, I'm like, wait a second. This is like, it used to be that, you know, they, they they would have more live shows and it'd only be one person going home a week, but you kind of had to weed out the 12 to get to your one or two stars. But you're losing genuine 
stars every week now. I mean, I really think there's something about like who they've been able to find since they brought the show back. And I think a lot of people question why are they bringing the show back, you know, because they called it the farewell season. And the next thing you know, American Idol's back and people are kind of like, is it too soon? But as soon as I saw the talent that was coming through, I was like, it's not too soon. You know, like, I don't know what's what's in the water now, but like the ABC. Yeah, water, I think also yeah. they're like, they're scouting people more. Uh-huh. Like giving more people like the opportunity or like even putting it into their minds, right. you know, like they're like grabbing people from like TikTok and like yeah. YouTube and that kind of thing. Um, and I think that some of those people might have never thought to audition for the show on their own. Right. And not just that, but it, every year it gets better. I mean, I don't know how many seasons you've watched since it's been on ABC, but in my it's opinion, the first one. just the first. Oh, so like when Maddie Poppy won? Um, no, this is the first. Oh, oh, oh this is the first one that you're on. Yes, I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Um, yeah. I, I, um, as a fan, like it's like this show was my childhood and now it's continuing and it's like the next generation is getting to witness it and it's cool. I mean, um, yeah, like, but it just, but what it does for artists, what it does for people like you who have a dream and, and, you know, it's, I always say like, no matter how far you make it, or even if you don't air, like it's, it's what it does for you in terms of your life. And it's what it does as far as the exposure, because even the social media posts, you know, just people knowing that you're on the show and the people back home that are rooting for you. It's special. Yeah, it's definitely since, um, you know, it came out that I was going to be on the show. It's definitely been great for me. Um, you know, it brings a lot more people out to my shows and my gigs and has got, you know, gotten me some really cool opportunities. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's just nice to like see the support that I have from like friends and family and, you know, people that even that I don't really necessarily talk too much that I might've been friends with in like high school Right. Um, just to, like see the support and like my community, like, you know, coming together and like rooting for me is just really nice. And, um, you know, seeing different faces out at my gigs, you know, people that I haven't seen in years and they come out and I'm like, holy cow, I haven't seen you in forever. And they're like, yeah, yeah. well, we saw that you were playing here. So we wanted to come see you. And I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, it's it's a time in your life, I think, you know, you'll remember forever and you'll always look back on it. And I mean, it, it has been a, a minute. I mean, you finished filming, what, like early December. So it's been a little while since you were actually filming the show. But what have you been up to since Idol? What's what's life looking like right now? Um, So I got my cosmetology license. Cool. Um, which I was, um, working toward before I, um, left for the show. I had graduated beauty school right before I went to Nashville. So I got my cosmetology license. Um, and I just did hair and makeup for my first opera. So it was oh. the first opera that I've worked on, which was really cool. And then next month I'm going to be um, working on some hair and makeup for um, the national tour of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Ooh. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm playing in my duo. I have another project on the way. Um, and I'm like, right now, I'm going to focus on uh, writing an album. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. There's a lot of cool oh, things going on. That's so exciting. I'm so, I'm so excited to follow your journey, you know, because it's been Thanks. so great to get insight into who you are as an artist and, you know, what being on American Idol has meant to you. And, and overall, like I said, I just think like, it's, it's so cool to think about, you know, what's going to happen next. Um, and I'm going to give you the chance to plug your socials or, you know, anything that you want people to know about you really quick, just some housekeeping guys. If you like this podcast, if you're on Apple Podcasts, you can follow, rate, and leave a review. Drive up the algorithm. You can do the same on Spotify. You can't review, but you can follow and rate. There's tons of other platforms that you can listen on. Thank you so much. Wherever you're listening, you can even watch on YouTube. I don't know about you, Chloe. I like to watch my podcasts. I like to see the reactions. I like to kind of feel the whole experience. So uh, you can check out American Idol on air. Just type that in on YouTube. You'll find all of our interviews and you can follow us on Instagram or TikTok at Idol on Aired podcast. You'll find clips from the show, all the info about upcoming guests. Now, Chloe, as far as where people can follow you and how they can stay invested in your journey, please 
fill everybody in? So my Instagram and TikTok are both at Chloe Solon. Um, so you can find me there. Um, and I post a lot of clips of me from gigs, um, just different things that I'm working on. Um, so I would love if you gave a follow and, uh, you know, came along with me for the journey of all of the crazy stuff that I get myself into. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, Chloe Solon, thank you so much for being on American Idol on air. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Bennett. It was so nice to meet you and talk to you.